And on today's episode of Geek Beat, I'm John P, and we're taking a look at the most detailed product review I've ever done in my life. This episode of Geek Beat is brought to you by Audible. Okay, today, folks, we are going to have a wild and woolly uh, video for you because there is no rhyme or reason to this. Dave was trying to get organized. It's not going to happen, Dave. Look at this. I have been in the middle of a huge review. You guys requested it. This is it. I'm delivering on the promise. So what we are talking about today is the Drobo 5N network attached storage device versus the Synology DS1512+. Plus. Now, just to cut right to the chase, you're looking for a recommendation. You want to know which one is the best. And I'm going to tell you, neither one, actually. It depends. It depends on the situation. And that's why I was so excited to do this review from the beginning, because I've heard so many people saying, you should always buy a Drobo, or you should always buy a Synology. And it made me really, really mad, because people are unique. These devices and all other devices are unique, and each one has a certain set of features and benefits. So I wanted to get down to the brass tacks, if you will. We needed to figure out what were each of these things good for. So first, let me run you through the methodology. Then I'm going to give you some of the results. And then we're going to talk about kind of how you can make a decision about what type of storage you need. OK. Now, before we get started, I took both of these units to my house where I installed them in my network in a home environment. I loaded terabytes worth of data, the exact same data on both of these machines, and I used them both in my home for all kinds of things that you would normally use in an office or home, like streaming media from them or getting files and documents on them, backing up computers to them, and things like that. So just from the very most basic user usability testing that I did, I found almost no difference between the two once they were installed. I mean, in my network, it didn't matter if I was watching a movie off the Drobo or if I was watching a movie off the Synology, the movie worked. If I was backing up, it worked. Once they were set up and installed, you wouldn't know what you were running off of. So we did that. I also made sure I kept them in the network for about a month using them every day. Nothing failed. Everything was fine. So then we brought them into the office where I set up this little makeshift uh, <clears throat> testing environment. So what we've got is a little test lab. Let me show you where, where we started from. We started with this Asus RT N66U. I love it. Don't, they call it the Dark Knight router, Dave. Nice. How awesome. OK, the reason we use this particular router is because of all of the commercially uh, available uh, routers for like home or small office use, this has the fastest Ethernet throughput. It's well documented. Now, we've got <clears throat> brand new Cat6 cabling. Four identical seven foot cables. They were taken out of the package and connected to these four devices. We have the Drobo 5N. We have the Synology 1512 Plus. We have this particular uh, laptop. Oh, darn it. What's this laptop model? It's the Blade. Razor. Razor Blade 2 notebook. <clears throat> And uh, it's bad boy. So we use this for PC. It's very, very fast. And then I've got my little MacBook Air, OK? So we've been testing across all of these. This is just laying the foundation here, OK? All right, so the first thing that I did was I broke out all these little test m devices so we could see what kind of specifications we're getting out of things. I've got the Drobo 5N plugged into this little Seasonic uh, power angel. It's just a power device. So we can measure that current. We've got the Synology plugged into this Belkin. They're, they're going to read out identically, but that way I can watch them as they're in use. I've got a laser uh, thermometer and we've got a decibel meter. So let me tell you how things stacked up. 
first of all, let's talk about energy consumption, okay? Um, the Drobo 5N is using somewhere on average in the 46 to 52 watt range. Depends on if we're doing something actively with it or if it's just sitting on the desk like it is now. The Synology tends to use around 55 to 62 watts. So based on my rough math, you know, and watching it for a couple of days, the, the Synology seems like it uses about 15% more power than the Drobo. Still not a lot of power, but a little bit more. <clears throat> now, what's it doing with all that power? I ran some speed tests, and what I used to do the speed testing was a fairly industry uh, well-known Blackmagic disk speed test. So what we do is we go in here and we select a target drive. I've got it up here on this one for you too, Dave. Uh, <clears throat> let's say I will select the video location on the Synology and we hit start. And what it's gonna do, it's just gonna start reading and writing, okay? So, uh, you know, you can see that the write speed on it is, you know, 84, read is one. It's gonna, they're gonna fluctuate. It's gonna do it again here in a second. It's gonna go back and forth. So these numbers, here's where I'm getting averages, okay? The Synology seems to be reading and writing around 95 to 100 megabits per second it's actually beating the Drobo because I'm getting somewhere in the 80 to 90 megabit per second range on the Drobo. So if we were, if this, if this uh, was merely a speed comparison and nothing else, the Synology would win, um, but only by a little bit, maybe 10 to 20% on average faster. One other thing we should consider though is the pricing because the Synology we purchased off of Amazon for $7.99, the Drobo, 569. That is a 40% price premium and you know we're not we're definitely not getting 40% more performance out of it although we are getting more performance. Now another thing that we should look at is the way in which we interface with these particular units. First of all Drobo has their own little software application and it runs, it's called the Drobo Dashboard. It runs on both Windows and, P and Mac. You can see I've got it here on this Mac as well as this PC. They look identical, okay? When we interface with it, you just load the dashboard, it searches, and if we had more Drobos on this network, they would all be listed here. We're gonna double click on it, and it goes in and shows us immediately the status of our Drobo. It says it's good, it's got, it's loaded with three terabyte drives, um, etc. Now when we want to do something like, for example, load a Drobo app, this is going to be one of the big areas of differentiation between these. I'm going to show you. The Drobo apps, we're going to click on that and you're going to see a listing of the apps available to run on the Drobo. In this case, there's only one, copy. Now I've told you guys about copy.com, it's really a cool service, you can get five gig for free, and then if you refer other people, you get five gig for each person you refer. So that's a good way, just refer a few friends, you get a bunch of space. Drobo will then allow you to have some of your files sitting on the five in that remotely sync with the copy.com cloud. So maybe your most important documents, for example, you can also pay for more service with copy.com and you could theoretically sync the whole thing. It would just cost a lot of money. Um, now they have one other application coming out very soon, like within the next couple of weeks, maybe by the time you're watching this video, that's going to be the Plex app. Now Dave and I both love Plex because it allows you to have all your media files stored on the machine and then sync them uh, or, or watch them remotely from other machines or even outside of your home, but you notice it's not here yet. Now let's take a look at the way that we interface with the Synology because it's entirely different. With the Synology, we're going to use a web-based interface. When you first log in, it looks like this, but there's, a, there's one little trick to this, okay? Remember with the Drobo, we just launched the Drobo app and it found the Drobos. With the Synology, you need to know what IP address your Synology has grabbed from your network when you plugged it in. And it doesn't just tell you that anywhere, so this can be a little challenging. Here's my tip for you. 
For the uh, iPhone or iOS in general, there is an application called Fing. You load up Fing, you connect it to your same wireless network, and you tell it to search. And it goes and tells you all the different devices on your network. In this case, we found the Synology disk station, and we found its IP address. Then you go into the web-based interface, you type in the IP address, and bang, here we go. So it's reporting that the status of our disk station is working well. Um, we can see the CPU monitor and RAM and things like that. This is more granular than Drobo gives us. So that's kind of cool if you're geeky. And if we wanted to install apps, which again, I was saying is a big deal, there's this little uh, thing called the Package Center. So we're going to double click on that, and it's going to load it up. So here we get to see what apps do we have installed. I currently have the Plex Media Server app, I have an iTunes server, and I have an antivirus server. But there are a lot more that we could get. We can get you know, oh man, DNS server. You see how many there are? Tomcat. Yeah, you can run an asterisk phone server. <laughs> Was it really? Yeah, go up. <laughs> Amazing. So yeah, there's just so many different apps. Media Wiki. Okay, so this is one clear advantage that the uh, Synology offers currently over the Drobo. And I don't think Drobo is ever going to even try and match this number of apps, but they're going to have more apps coming out. So remember, we talked about the price differential here, okay? We're paying a 40% premium for that Synology. I think the two biggest things you're gonna get with that are one, a little more speed, and two, you're gonna get a lot more apps support. So if what you wanna do is replace some PCs or servers in your network with just one box that can do a bunch of things, the Synology is gonna work out really well for you there. Okay, um, we've got a lot more to talk about, but before we do, let me take just a minute and let's talk about audiblepodcast.com who's sponsoring the show today. You know, you can head over to audiblepodcast.com forward slash geekbeat and you can get a free audio book. And I have two excellent suggestions for you guys today. I love comedians. I love to watch comedy and listen to it. So here you go, right here. If you have never heard Stephen Wright before, good God, he is hilarious. He's got the driest sense of humor ever. You should go get this book, I Still Have a Pony. I mean, it's 42 minutes long, you'll be cracking up the whole time. And then one more, Surely you know who Jim Gaffigan is. Of course I do. <laughs> he is hilarious. And he's very clean. Both of these guys, are, by the way, are very clean. So, you know, anybody can listen to him. But uh, King Baby, it's a great, great show that he did. It's a little over an hour long. Keep you laughing the whole time. So if you just want a good laugh, go sign up for Audible. Remember, you can watch that when you're driving in your car or traveling to and from work and things like that. Okay guys, we're in the home stretch now, so I wanna to talk to you about what I think the big advantage the Drobo has over the Synology, since we talked about the other just now. Okay, the Drobo is gonna offer us a couple of things that we just don't get with not only the Synology, but any other brand of network attached storage. Number one, we can very, very easily set this thing up. When we first uh, go to install, the Synology or any other kind of drive, you're gonna notice, and I'm gonna pull this out in a minute, we're gonna see what happens. There is a tray. I had to eject this door and we have to pull this out and we have to unscrew drives to get them mounted in there. With the Drobo, there's just this little button here. If I push this button, this disc pops straight out and when we put them in, they pop straight in. So it's really, really easy to load and you can mix and match any size drive you want and it's gonna create one big pool of storage from a, a variety of sizes. Where with the Synology and other normal kind of network attached storage, we need to use identical drives across all bays. So that does a couple of things. Um, one of the most important for me is, we currently have all three terabyte drives loaded in both of these machines. But let's say that a year or two down the road, they come out with six terabyte drives and we want to expand both of these devices. First of all, with the Synology, we just can't. You, you can't go in and let's say remove them one at a time and have it increase the size easily. It's very manual, 
labor intensive. What we can do with the Synology is buy an add-on box for $500 that we would plug in via an eSATA port on the back. And then we could add more three terabyte drives. So we could double it by doubling the physical footprint and more cost. With the Drobo, we can eject these drives one at a time and stick the new six terabyte drives in, let them rebuild and eventually change it so they're all, that, all the new size and the storage has doubled within the existing given chassis. So that is really an excellent uh, benefit. So kind of the ease of use, simplicity, expandability. There's another big difference, which is in the form factor itself. I know it doesn't look like a big deal, but if you do the math on this stuff, it's quite interesting. So the, uh, the Drobo, as you can see from the front, is much narrower than the Synology. And in cases for where you have a small business, where you need to put things in a rack, these are not made for rack mounting, but we'd use our shelf like this one. If you notice, the Synology takes up more than half the width of the shelf. So I can only fit one on a shelf. The Drobo, however, I can easily fit two plus have some more space, even if they're on their side. One of the other things we'll notice is that the Synology is a little about three and a half, this is a, a, a rack U mount. It's about three and a half rack U's, and then the, the Drobo's over four. But if we turn the Drobo on its side, it could still operate like this, and it will be the same size. So what that means is for density in a small business, you could fit basically two of these to every one of these, and that kind of makes, that kind of makes a big difference. For, for you know a lot of situations. Okay, uh, let's see. The last thing we're gonna do is we're going to find out what happens. I've not done this yet. We're gonna find out together when we just yank drives out of these things. Okay, so you ready for this, Dave? Uh, I think so. <laughs> All right, here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna go over here. Uh, oops. We've got the Synology website, uh, our web interface loaded up here, and I am going to yank out one of the drives. Now in theory, we should be fine and we should just keep working, uh, but I'm wondering what kind of notification we're going to get. So I'm just going to pull this right out. Okay, um, well, we're waiting for some sort of notification that there's a problem there. I'm not seeing it yet. We don't have any kind of an alert going on here with this light. Now we get a beeping status, starting to beep on me. Still don't see an alert over there yet. Oh, there we go. System event, volume one is entered degraded mode. Okay, so by the way, this is what I was talking about when I was saying there's a tray. So when we first installed this drive, we have to put in four screws into this tray, and then the trays will insert in there. So I'm just going to plug it back in. You can see attention, volume has degraded. Please go to storage manager for more info. I'm going to plug it back in and I'm going to shut. Uh, that's back installed. Let's see if it's going to fix itself. I don't know what it's going to do. I want it to fix itself. Meanwhile, let's come over here and do the same thing to the Drobo. I'm just going to randomly pull out the bottom drive. Now, you see how that one worked. For that, oh, the, oh cool, it's still spinning in my hand. I can oh, yeah. feel the uh, gyroscope, yeah. <laughs> gyroscope effect. Okay, so I pulled that out. Now we're immediately getting some yellow flashing lights here. Okay, we've got a notification. Um, data protection is in progress. Drive removed. Health, we're still good, but we can see that uh, it's, it's giving us a warning, okay? So it's wanting me to fix it. It says data protection in progress. So what it's trying to do right now, it thinks this one's dead or gone, and it's going to rebuild the data and make sure it's all safe up in there. But I'm just going to go ahead and stick this back in, which again, this is how you initially set the thing up. You just stick it in, stick those in. Okay, now it says uh, degraded with one extra drive. You're protected against one hard drive failure. Um, 
It's going to take 14 hours to fix the data protection problem here, but hopefully it'll recognize that I plugged that extra drive in soon and not take 14 hours. Over here, uh, please go to Storage Manager for more information. So we're going to have to go into the control panel. Um, storage Manager. Okay, guys, I honestly have not done this before. I'm going to have to figure it out, and I'm going to tell you how I fixed it. But I have a feeling I'm going to have to go pay a little bit of manual attention to the Synology because, like I said, that's one of the big differences. We're going to get some more capabilities out of this in terms of having access to more apps. We're going to get a little higher performance, and we're we're going to get to tweak a lot more stuff, but in exchange for those things, we're going to pay a higher price and we're going to have more manual attention. So, if you're the kind of if you're like me and you know that you can fix things like this given enough time and you don't mind, there's nothing wrong with the Synology. It's a great device and if you're like all about performance and that's what you mainly care about, go with that one. Um, the Drobo, it's going to give us a couple of apps initially, more apps coming soon, a much lower price point, and a whole lot of automation. It's just stick it in, plug it in, forget it. You can see that it's already found the other drive that's been put back in here. Um, so uh, that's the big deal. So you guys have to make your own decision about which of these two devices is right for you. And when you do, I hope you will tweet me and let me know at John Pose or head over to google.com Google, uh, forward slash John P uh, plus John P and tell me which one you bought if you buy one of them. I hope that helped you. If you have any other questions, we've got a full blog post with more details than I can shake a stick at. Head on over to geekbee.tv, read up on it, and I'll see you later. Your arms tired yet, Dave? Very. <laughs> All right, bye guys.